Hi everyone. Welcome to RazorPay Geek Talks. I'm Nitin Agrawal. I'm Associate Director of Engineering at RazorPay. And here I have Pawan and Kaushik with me. Let's quickly start by their introductions. Uh, hey, so I'm Kaushik. I'm working in uh, RazorPay as part of cross-border payments team. So I work as a back-end developer over there. Uh, apart from that, I'm also uh, working on developing certain uh, uh, scaling up level activities and also managing the infrastructure of RazorPay. Hi, I am Pawan. I am working as a senior SD in cross-border payments team at Razorpay. I have been managing scale-up activities and infrastructure uh, during the events like cricket matches and e-commerce sales. So we are talking about scaling and cricket. There is a lot which goes behind scaling payments when the, when the whole world is watching cricket matches. So Pawan, would you like to talk about you know what you folks do when cricket matches are going on? Sure, sure, Nathan. Uh, have you watched the India-Pakistan World Cup match? No, I really could not watch it. But I heard it was a terrific match and Virat Kohli did really well in that match. See, yeah, no one wants to miss uh, India-Pakistan match and especially for cricket fans, right? This is one of the most mind-boggling match uh, that happened uh, during the World Cup, right? And it is more special to us at Razorpay because uh, you know that our payments went up to 5 to 35x of the usual traffic and we were managing the show behind the scenes. Okay. You said 35x scale, 35 times, it's tremendous. So what is the actual reason behind it? You want to tell me? So it's basically, uh, India is actually a home to uh, most of the uh, sport fans and uh, especially cricket fans. So around uh, 150 million of the people who watch us in India are actually a cricket fans. Uh, and uh, during, especially during this particular matches, uh, like uh, big World Cup India-Pakistan matches, uh, we have uh, quite a few lot of merchants who uh, actually transact payments through this. So, so for example, the viewers who are watching the matches, uh, uh, they will watch it through uh, OTT platforms and apart from that, uh, uh, there can be a possibility where uh, uh, people bet through uh, fantasy game apps. Uh, and there is also, of course, uh, during this particular high profile games, uh, you, you would want uh, Coke and pizza to have it along with it. So we, there are actually uh, quite a lot of business going during this particular period of time. So, but the interesting thing is, all these particular business are all powered through Razorpay. So that is the reason why uh, we have 35x uh, payments which is going via Razorpay and uh, we need a scale, scaling up activities which uh, leads us to uh, provide this much uh, payments. Very interesting. So Kaushik, how do you plan for such, such events? So usually uh, before a particular any major event happens, uh, we get requirements from the merchants uh, saying that they need uh, a particular TPS and uh, we actually formulate everything and provide. So we get different types of traffics also. So for example, uh, so certain merchants will uh, need a high uh, burst traffic during a very short period of time. And there are certain merchants uh, like uh, uh, food delivery apps, uh, would, they would require constant traffic throughout the match but uh, with a very lesser TPS. So we have to make sure that we provide uh, uh, different types of requirements for different merchants and uh, that's, that is all the process of how we provide. So by TPS you mean uh, transactions per yeah, second? Yeah, transaction per second. And what goes behind, what are the things which is supporting this? Uh, so we have more than 20 services uh, that are underneath that helps this uh, scaling up process, right? So all these services are uh, part of different legs of our payments such as say order creation, payment processing, authentication, uh, then we have fraud checks, uh, smart routing, then we have machine learning systems that are in place. So all these services needs to be scaled up uh, to make sure uh, this 35x payment uh, times traffic is being processed via Razorpay. Uh, at the same time, we should also make sure there is no impact on the availability of our services and there is no impact on the success rate. Okay, so how do you come up with scaling decisions? Let's say there are multiple services involved you spoke about. Right. So how do you come up like uh, how to scale a particular service or what not to do? Right, so we have regular performance testing uh, that are being done, right? And operations like this are uh, not easy. They are a bit challenging, right? And uh, we should, we are not like, uh, we just throw hardware and uh, uh, just keep on increasing uh, horizontal scale. So we keep cost at uh, in our mind and we make sure we are optimized in terms of our infrastructure uh, that we scale up, right? Uh, for instance, uh, uh, if we have n number of pods to support 500 TPS and 
it's not that we have to uh, increase it to four times to support 2000 TPS, right? Okay. So uh, we make sure uh, uh, there are other factors like uh, database connections, uh, non-transactional traffic. Uh, so we keep all these in mind and we using these performance test results, we scale up our pods accordingly. So Kaushik, do you start scaling up before the matches? What all steps are part of the process? Uh, so yeah, we do scale up before the match. So we scale up one and a half hour before the match so that uh, uh, certain merchants are able to uh, give up burst traffic so that our services can be able to handle it. Uh, so basically, we not in the process, we not only just scale up the services. Apart from that, we also need to have, uh, change the uh, throttling limits for each and every merchant. So this doesn't actually only compress of uh, throttle limits only on merchant. It, it is also on based upon uh, how many products they use and uh, each and every route, uh, how much should we scale up and how, sh how much should we change the throttling limit. Mm -hmm. So this all is uh, com compressed of package and then sent to it. So you folks, you are not watching the match, you are not enjoying it. You are actually busy doing all these things. There, is there no automation in place? No, we do. So that's the interesting part. So that is where uh, we, so that's why whenever the match starts, uh, we actually just si sit simple and monitor these events and then we'll just watch one of the Virat's best knock. Uh, so basically what happens during this particular process is, uh, we configured, a, uh, we have a configuration saying that a, a particular IPL bot which will kick in before one and a half hour before the match, that will uh, scale up the uh, services for different uh, as per merchant requirements and post that uh, this particular bot uh, uh, whatever we have configured for certain merchants, uh, it will take as per the TPS requirement and it will uh, scale up the resources for each and every services. Very interesting. Yes, and scaling down is a interesting problem as well. So basically, uh, once the scale uh, peak traffic is done, it's not that we uh, immediately go down to the normal uh, TPS, right? So that would uh, tear down our uh, infra or uh, us, our uh, platform. So we make sure we gradually decrease the pod counts and we make sure our systems are stable. Nice. And how long do we keep it uh, scaled up, right? Uh, is it like from the beginning till the end, how it works? Uh, it actually, again, depends on the merchant requirements. So let's say as per the fant fantasy game apps which we provide, so those merchants want the scaling up to be done pre-match. Okay. So example, uh, before the af right after the toss is done, uh, we'll have so many bets placing in so that we scale up half an hour before the match, uh, even the toss starts, so that these particular uh, bus traffic can be handled. So apart from that, even after the match starts, we don't scale down. We scale down to a certain TPS where those particular requirements will be supporting for other merchants. So example, uh, for uh, food delivery apps, those merchants will require uh, constant uh, traffic. Cost traffic, yeah. yeah. Throughout so, the match. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we do, the systems will be scaled up throughout the matches. Mm. Is there any bottleneck you face or how do you optimize those kind of scenarios? You want to talk about that? Yeah, so see, production traffic always surprises us, right? So uh, we should be uh, cautious uh, when we are doing this scale up or scale down process, uh, right? So, and in the payment processing life cycle, uh, it involves uh, multiple steps, for example, uh, Razor Pay contacts with, a makes API calls with gateways and banks, okay. which involves uh, authentication, authorization, capturing, verify, different API calls just for processing one payment, right? We should not bombard the gateways or the banks to support, uh, to achieve this. So what we do is we basically uh, disable the non-transactional traffic, which is not part of those uh, payment uh, processing and we disable them, we hold on to them, we make sure our transactional traffic, real-time payments are not impacted uh, in this process. So what do you mean by non-transactional, right? Uh, is it not part of that payment transactions or? Right, see, to support the uh, payment processing, right, so uh, although the real-time payments are, uh, network calls are done to the gateways or banks, there are some verification calls that we do on top of this, uh, right? So how it works is basically we have queues uh, where we pushes our uh, transactions to there and using those queues, we actually call gateways or banks to validate all these things, right? So uh, it's not necessary that happens at the moment in real time. So what we do is during these peak hours, we pause reading messages from those queue. Okay. So once 
all the peak traffic is done. Uh, and once we uh, lower down the TPS and merchant requirement uh, rate limiting is reverted back, what we do is we enable back this transaction, non-transactional traffic okay. so that the er earlier requests which are queued also get processed. Okay, you mean to say the queues are on hold for that period of right. time for non-transactional uh, Right, processing. this is just to avoid any uh, uh, too much of bombarding to the uh, gateway or the banks. Got it, got it. So it's not only about banks and gateway. So in addition to that, uh, so we can't just scale up all the services to the maximum limit. We also have DB connections. So we have to make sure that we don't bombard the DP with multiple requests and uh, so that there will be pooling of DB, uh, DB connections happening. So that uh, we actually uh, don't bring down the DB exactly. So we have to take care of uh, the scaling up service and also uh, check the health health and uh, metrics and each and for each and every services. Okay, so Pawan, what about the success rate, right? Uh, so that is also one of the important uh, thing, right, in payments. How do you keep it high? Uh, so see, we have up to 35 times of payments traffic that is going through uh, during this India-Pakistan match that happened, right? And with more than 1 million payments that were processed in less than one hour, so success rate is our key component. Uh, and uh, there was no impact on success rate and at times we have seen a improvement in success rate as okay. well, right? Uh, to actually manage the latency from the gateways or the bank side, we have circuit breakers in place. So what does that mean is whenever we have seen some kind of anomaly during with a bank or a gateway, so we make sure we switch it to a different bank or a gateway and the payment process or the payment journey is completed seamlessly. Right. Suppose, for example, if a particular bank UPI is down, so we upfront detect that we have a, we will create a downtime for it. At the same time, we show to the customer and we will uh, intimate them that uh, there is already a, a downtime under the low SR with this, so that the customer choose other payment options to proceed with the payment. So you will not get request for that particular gateway, and there will not be any right. added latencies, and right. everything will be improved. Yeah. So Kashik, how do we monitor? Everything else, let's talk about health of the platform or if something else is going down. Yeah, so currently, uh, whenever we scale up, we have a monitoring dashboard for each and every services where uh, not only the health will be maintained, how much error code and uh, what is the success rate and latencies of each and every route and uh, what is the average route or average latencies which is being uh, managed through that particular service. So if we find if anything is going down, we get an alert. So since this the TPS which we are managing through, this has to be reacted within seconds. So we, we immediately have a bridge call so that uh, what are the teams which is actually handling the particular service, they join and then we'll try to res resolve it in 5 to 10 seconds or in a minute or something in however we could uh, do great, it. Great, great, great. So what next? What is the feature? Uh, let's talk about automation of things. Uh. Right. So, so we are building a, a self-serve portal, right, that basically our operations team can use. So what does that mean is basically whenever there is a new requirement uh, for a configuration of a scale up for a particular cricket match or beat any event, right. So the operations team can leverage that platform, uh, they can configure it with an approval layer on top of it. So the entire configuration to uh, razor flow bot uh, kicking in, scaling up the services, uh, applying the rate limiting and then scaling down, all this happens in a seamless fashion, right? And uh, with the payment uh, need growing day to day uh, in India, uh, so we have we have this use case not only for cricket matches, be it online ticket booking on uh, early bird ticketing, right? Or we have e-commerce sales uh, that happens. So all these can be fulfilled there. With this scale up, we have wide uh, range of options open to use uh, payment aggregate. Super, super. I can't believe, you know, there are so many things going behind the scenes to give a excellent experience to our customers and making payments successful at this scale. I really learned a lot today and I'm sure the audience must have also liked it. We'll come up with similar stories going forward and thanks a lot, Power and Kushan.